Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMag TV. In today's video for Lightroom, I'm going to show you how we can create this nice pastel effect. And as always, you can download the free preset, link is in the description below, so you can recreate this effect with one click. But if you'd like to know how to actually recreate this yourself and how you can tweak it and adjust it, stick around and I'll show you all that right now. So as always, in the develop module, I'm going to take you step by step through the process and we're going to work our way through the panels that are used in this particular effect. So this is the starting image and you can see it's already a nice image. It's taken from a stock library so you can download this yourself if you want to or want to just like it and test this out to see exactly how it fares. But let's start off with the basic panel. So we expand that out. Now there are certain things that you're going to use to tweak the image. You may find that you want to increase or decrease the exposure slightly depending upon the image, whether it's underexposed or overexposed. So for this example, I'm going to leave that now. We're going to move on through the other settings and come back and adjust that should I need to once we've adjusted the highlight shadows and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the contrast and we're going to boost that ever so slightly. So we're going to take that up maybe about five or ten points. So we'll just take that, increase that a little bit to get some nice contrast in the image. Now because of the way this is shot, we've got a strong light coming in. We don't need to go too crazy, but it's there should you need it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the highlights, shadows and the blacks. What we're going to do is we want to effectively push these up. So we're going to increase the highlights by about pretty around about five. It's actually more than enough, I think, for this image because it's already quite bright. So let's just take that up. There we go. Next up, we want to open the shadows out quite a bit. So I'm going to boost this a fair amount, probably around 20, 25 for this particular image. And if you keep a look in the sort of dark area on the left hand side, you'll see that that starts to open up a little bit. Don't want to go crazy, but that's that's a good starting point. And we do the same now with the blacks. We'll push those probably around about 14, 15 points just to sort of lighten things up. And that's what we're really looking to do is lighten up the dark areas in this, this particular image. We want to avoid that sort of strong light to dark color or tonal changes. So we've done that. Next thing we're going to do is move on to the presence section. We're going to start off with a clarity and we're going to reduce that slightly to soften the image down a little bit. We don't want it to be quite so sharp. Again, this is going to reduce the contrast between the highlight edges and the darker edges. So we'll reduce that not too far, probably about, about minus 5, minus 10, depending on the image. Let's go for about minus 10 for this example. And with the vibrance, we're going to drop that down as well. We want to desaturate this. Now, the vibrance is going to concentrate on those skin tones and the nice sort of greens and blues and so on if they're in the image. So we'll start to reduce those, and it'll generally take those nice colors and just soften them down a little bit. So about minus 15, and with the saturation, we're going to drop that a little bit more, probably around about minus 20. So we just leave some color in there. We kind of get a nice retro feel to the image. So moving on, we're now going to go down to the tone curve section. So let's just expand that out. Now what we're going to do with this is we're effectively going to reduce the blacks in the image so we're going to end up with a slightly flatter image. Now all you need to do is make sure you're in the linear mode so where it's got the point curve and linear you can see on the right hand side we have the little icon. If you're in this mode where you've got all the sliders available to you just simply click on the icon to switch over and we can now directly edit the histogram and the tone curve. So all we need to do is come down to the bottom left hand corner which denotes the black area in the image where we've got the little point and you can see we get the two headed arrow we can now click and drag that up we don't want to go too far with this but you can see what's happening is we end up just flattening the tone of the image out so again we get that sort of retro look so let's take a look at it before and a look at after so we're already getting that sort of pastel kind of shading and with the coat the sort of color reduction it also enhances that effect so once we've done that we're now ready to move on and start looking at the split toning options so let's open up split toning. Now, if you've never used a split toner before, this allows us to apply some coloration to the highlights and the shadows. We can adjust the intensity of those colors, and we can also adjust the mix and the balance between those. So this is a great way of adding in some color effects. So if you wanted to get a sort of cool tone, then you could apply a blue to the highlights and shadows. You can even mix those to get sort of very movie kind of effects. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to start working on introducing some highlight color first of all and then we'll move on to the shadows. So with the highlights we want to introduce a little bit of sort of brown stroke orange kind of color into it. So when we come to the hue we're just going to take this over to around 25 to 30. That's going to bring in the color that we want. 
And if we take a look at the color chip there, you can see nothing's happening. But once we start to introduce the saturation into it, we'll start to bring some color in. So we're going to take this over to about 35 to 40. And as you can see, we're already starting to get some of those warm brown tones into the image. Let's take that over to around about, let's put 40, that should do. So you can see now if we do a before and after, we brought some color back into those highlights, but we brought in a nice brown tone. So we're going to do the same now with the the hue uh, for the shadow areas. So with this time, we're not going to use a brown. We're going to bring in a bit of blue into this. So let's just take that over to around about 200, 220 when we start to get into the blue tones. And once we're in there, we can then start doing the same as before. We can start introducing some saturation. So you can mix this as much as you want. So we're going to take this up and push it. I don't want to go crazy with it. Possibly around about the 50 mark. So you can see now that the shadows start to take on a blue tint. So if we look at where you've got the sort of shadows of the trees and the darkness in the hair and everything, we've now got a blue tint to that. And the rest of it has a nice brown tint to it. So it gives a nice sort of warm retro kind of vibe to this, but also quite a nice soft pastel tone. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So I think you can agree that's a pretty nice effect. Now, depending on your taste, there are a couple of other things you could do to this. If you wanted to, we could add some grain into this to give it a sort of nice, again, retro kind of feel where it was shot with a nice high ISO. So if you wanted to do that, you could literally just come down to the effects panel and all we need to do is adjust the grain. So if we just zoom in so we can see a little bit, you can see there's already some natural grain in the picture where we've adjusted it. But if you wanted to, you could quite easily start to add some more grain in there. So we can start to push that. You can see that starts to increase the amount of grain in there, adjust the size so we can get a sort of nice natural effect to it. And the roughness of it, we can adjust that to taste as well. So you can see as we adjust this, we get all different kinds of noise effects in there. So it's pretty cool. Again, like I say, that's completely to taste. And the other thing you can do if you wanted to is start to add some vignetting in there. So we could easily darken those edges off to get a little bit of sort of drama to it, draw attention into the actual subject itself adjust the midpoint, the feather, and so on. We can adjust all that if we want to. And again, let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So I think that's quite a nice effect where we shot into the sunlight and you can see we've now added the grain in there and we've given it that nice pastel effect. So there we go. That's all there is to creating this pastel effect with Lightroom. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we've released on the Kindle store, 8 Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques, where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.